Everybody all set? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's been five days uh, since Thursday. Um, you know, obviously, it wasn't a great game, wasn't a great performance. Um, but the kids have moved on, we've moved on, watched the tape, um, had time to digest it, the coaching staff, time to digest it. Um, players um, had two really good practices. Um, with the guys, we practiced Sunday night just to go ahead and get the, the bad taste out of our mouth, get, a good, get an early start. Um, and then today had a really good practice. Um, kids responded well. Uh, you know, I've been out there, I don't know if you guys noticed, uh, out there coaching the scout team defense, being around the offense a little more, um, just so they know that I'm there with them. Um, completely have their backs and want to help them get, you know, get better. Um, being with the defense as well. Um, last Friday, went out on the road recruiting, which was great. You know, we flew back in 4 a.m. Uh, Friday morning, uh, by 7.30, I was on the road hitting local high schools. Um, I can't obviously talk about any of the kids or any of the schools that we went to, but hit seven schools locally, went to three games. Um, and, you know, the big message to the guys, we're building this thing uh, locally, even though we have a large footprint and we're, we're reaching a lot of kids across the country. Um, we want to make sure we're attacked this area and recruiting first. And, uh, you know, we've done that and made our presence known. Um, and the guys know, you know, uh, you know, what we're doing, how excited we are for the future of this program. Um, and I just want to say again, I've said this before, but, you know, I appreciate the job that you guys do. Um, a lot of the questions, um, and even though some of them are tough, um, I truly do appreciate them. Because um, what they do is they, they provoke thought. Uh, and I really appreciate And after the game, some of the really good questions, you know, as I was out recruiting, was really able to sit back and think about um, and mull over. And I know we're going to get some of those today, and I appreciate them. Um, and then just some of the, you know, older guys, some of the vets, you know, Mark, Mark, um, and the young guys, Zach and Ryan and Matt, um, you know, the, the job that you guys do, um, I really do appreciate it, and you know the, the questions that you ask really do. I try to reflect on them. I don't even know if I always give the, the best answer in the moment, but I have time to go back and think and uh, really reflect on some of the things because the things that you're asking might be some of the same things that our players or our fan base um, are thinking as well, so I really do appreciate them. Um, and, and one question that happened Thursday night after the game, and, uh, and it really hit me. Uh, the question was this, is, is Logan still your quarterback? That was the question. Um, and really, as I sat there and thought about it, they're all our quarterbacks. All of them. I love Logan to death. I love Newtown to death. Russo, Toddy. Uh, they are all our quarterbacks. And I know there's a story there, and I know people are trying to get a story, and I appreciate it. Because um, people care. They care about this program. You guys care about the product that we put on the field. I care about their guys, um, you know, we lost PJ, had 47 career starts, uh, threw for 1,500 passes in his career. Um, great player, and these guys are young guys, um, getting a lot of reps right now, and we're, they're trying as hard as they can to be the best possible quarterbacks that they can be. I see them work every single day, the attention to detail that they have, how much they put into this team, how much they put into their craft, um, and all four of them have become really good teammates, really good leaders. Um, and we support all of them a thousand percent. Um, and the same thing we do with all of our positions, there is open competition every single day in every single thing that we do. We've played 11 linebackers this season. Wow. And we're rotating those guys through. We play about 10 to 11 defensive linemen. Rotate those guys through. Um, and all of your reps are determined by how you play in practice and then when you get the chance on game day, how you play. And that's how everything we do in this program, the kids appreciate it. Um, they're competing every single day, but then they stay together and they're great teammates off the field um, and in the meeting rooms. They compete against each other. They want to get the most reps. They want to get the most playing time. Um, and I fully support uh, all of their effort that they do. Um, you know, one of the big things that um, you know, I see as my job as head football coach is my first job is to love these players, to do everything I can to support them, put them in the best possible situation, make sure when they come through our program, they're better people, they're better students, they're better men of character, um, and obviously they're better players, and if they have aspirations to go to the next level, we want to help them do that. We want to make sure they get their degrees. So we are all in on the development of our players. That's a, a paramount priority in this program. Um, so, you know, some of the awards from last week, and again, you guys know how special this is to me, Scout Team Special Teams Player of the Week was L.J. Holder. 
Scout Team Offensive Player of the Week was Johnny Forrest. Scout Team Defensive Player of the Week was Ty Mason. Um, and I know Matt or some, somebody, I think Ryan might have already noticed it. Um, the, the guy that's going to be wearing jersey number one this week. Um, you know, the first week, our young linebackers, um, you know, I thought a lot of the game, a lot of the issues that we had, um, you know, had to do with how we were fitting the run and those kind of things. But I thought that group has really focused and really done a nice job over the last three games. Um, we're coming together, defending the run, um, fitting the gaps, being leaders. Uh, the kid that's going to wear number one this week um, starts on kickoff team. He starts on kickoff return. Um, he played 80 snaps on defense the other night. Um, and still every single special teams rep um, was going as hard as he could possibly go throughout the entire game. Uh, so the kid that will wear jersey number one uh, is Chappelle Russell. Um, so we're excited about him. Um, you know, that whole linebacker core has really matured in four short weeks um, to really, you know, gain that experience and playing time. Um, and he's one of the guys that's really stepped up. I announced it to the kids today, and the kids went nuts. Um, um, from our team for, the, for, for Chappelle. Um, this week, Houston, uh, obviously they're a tough opponent. Played really good football. They've won a ton of games over the last four years. Um, Major Applewhite and I were together at Alabama uh, in 2007. He and I are really good friends. Um, so I respect the job that he does as an offensive mind and, and now as a head coach. And then Brian Johnson uh, is their offensive coordinator. Brian and I uh, were together at Mississippi State and we were number one in the country for 10 weeks. Uh, my last season that we were there. Uh, so I know what a coach Brian is, what a good job he does, and uh, you know we're excited. They've got really good talent both sides of the ball. Their return team, uh, kickoff-wise, and their kickoff team, um, I think are two of the best in the conference. And uh, so we know the challenge we have had really good athletes across the, f uh, across the field. And uh, you know I think they've got one of the most dynamic defensive linemen um, in college football. And you just watch him uh, play, he jumps off the tape, um, so we got to know where he is every single play because he's a kid at that position that can that can affect the game. So we got to know where he is and understand um, what a good player he is. Um, so with that, I appreciate you guys you know bearing with me through all that. Um, so any questions? With the philosophy of what you do in practice yep. is determines the amount of reps. There was a lot of hype when Anthony Russo was being recruited here. What is he going to do in practice to? get those reps in. Sure, yeah, just the same thing with every single kid that we do. We, we chart every single thing that happens in practice. Your MAs, your MEs, your reads, your missed throws, um, changing the protections, accuracy on the passes, you know, all those kind of things, you know, we chart those on a daily basis. Love him, he's getting better every single uh, every single week, every single day, um, but that's that's result. Yeah, the, when you break it down, what are the issues on offense? Because obviously, PJ's a loss, Jihad's a loss, sure. Leon's a loss. Um, we have a center you're excited about, you got three good receivers, you got Rock Paul. So it seems like there's still talent there. Right. What are, why are things just not firing? Why do things come apart as much as they do? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, you got to give credit to to, uh, to USF. I thought they had a really good plan. They've got really good players across the board, a lot of experienced guys, uh, and did some did some good things to affect us. So you got to give credit to them, you know, first of all. Um, but I think you know the execution wasn't as clean as we would like, um, and then we weren't on, when we were on our proper guys, we weren't generating the movement uh, that we need, and that's been a point of emphasis for everybody. So I've been down there coaching the uh, defensive scout team because the last couple of weeks, um, you notice that they're kind of the defensive scout team wasn't, you know, playing at the speed that our guys need to see, um, and then they get to the game, and now that speed is doubled. So we're trying to make sure our defensive scout team is going a million miles an hour. We're rotating guys through, and I'm down there coaching them, um, and they're giving unbelievable effort, which hopefully on Saturday, the, the change of speed won't be you know, that great. So that, you know, I think all components are there. Um, so we've really addressed that, and uh, bless you. Thank you. And so that's, that's one of the things. What'd you, Coach, what do you, you think of Jacob Martin? I mean, he had more, a, a big highlight for you. In that yeah, game. I mean, he's just, the thing I'm proud of with Jacob, he's obviously very talented. Mm -hmm. um, but just how relentless he plays. Mm -hmm. The effort that he gives right. week in and week out, um, you know, it's hard um, when there's six sudden changes that happen to a defense. You know, that doesn't happen very much, and when it happens, you're not going to win a lot of games. But I was really proud of the way the defensive kids, and Jacob Martin was one of the big leaders of this. Whenever there was a turnover, whether it was, you know, on the 20-yard line going in or the 50 or whatever it was, mm -hmm. you could see him just say, put the ball down. We're going to go in there and stop him. Forced four field goals 
Right. And we forced a, a goal line stand. Right. They only had one touchdown on six, you know, sudden change situations. Right. Jacob, um, even though he is a great player, it's his character, it's his leadership, um, his positivity, his energy, how relentless he is, mm -hmm. um, makes him a special player that he is. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, the sack calls fumble. Right. Um, really good play. But it's just because he's so relentless in every single play that he goes as hard as he can. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, when the time to actually make that play, yeah. it shows up and, and, you know, it's there. So I've been really proud of them. Um, you know, same thing with Nick Sharg and a lot of the single-digit guys. They just go so hard and play so relentless. Um, and then when the time comes to make the play, you know, they make it. Coach, has the extra time helped a little bit after two short weeks? You get a little, you get a little time off. <laughs> I was thinking about it, and I had a bunch of people, you know, bring that up to me, and I'm never going to use it as an excuse. Um, we had three games in 13 days. I've never been around it. Um, hadn't played on a Friday night in a long time. Hadn't played on a Thursday night um, since we won the Egg Bowl back in 2014, I think it was, on Thanksgiving night. Um, you know, but we got to learn from it. Um, we've got, you know, another short week coming up, you know, during the season. So it's a six-day schedule. We've got to get ready for it. But the, the thing is, you know, we've had five days now, um, you know, to, to recover and learn and regroup from the USF game. Um, but yeah, we, we've you know got another extra day of preparation. Um, was able to watch the TV game live, you know, of, of Houston and Texas Tech. Um, so that was that was good. Very good team. Would you consider this a wake up call from those loss to South Florida? A wake up call. Yeah. I think every single thing that we do, we try to be the absolute best in every single thing that we do. We go out there every single day, work at the absolute hardest that we can try to learn from our mistakes, even in wins. You have to learn from your mistakes. Um, so that's what we do every single day. What can we do better? What is our process, whether it be a six day week, whether it be an eight day week, whatever it is, we have a process that we go to go through to be the absolute best that you can be. Um, so even in a win, there are things that you didn't do well. Um, you know, sometimes it's a little easier after that to deal with it, but you know, our process is we're gonna go as hard as we can, be as good as we can, improve every single day, whether we were undefeated or whether we had lost four, we're going to go about our business and try to get better every single day. And that's just the mindset of this program. Um, and thankfully, it's the mindset of our kids uh, that they come to work every single day want to get better. Um, we wear a catapult system uh, during practice that charts effort, it charts change of direction, it charts every single thing that they do. Uh, that Sunday practice, so, uh, two nights ago, um, some of the highest numbers of, of player load, uh, distance sprints, maximum explosive efforts. Um, so these kids, it's documented scientifically how hard they work and how good they want to be. Um, whether something bad happens or good happens, they want to improve in every single phase of, of their game. Coach, when, when you have a quarterback decision, I'm assuming you're going to take it at the end of the week. Do you already know about your quarterback's confidence, not knowing which one's going to be and, and everything like that? Well, they got, every single day you got to come here and you got to go to work. So if it's, you know, we're worried about the confidence, we're worried about who's going to execute the offense, who's going to make the right checks, who's going to make the right reads, who's going to throw the ball to the receivers, um, you know, those kind of things. It's the same thing we do um, with every single position in our program. Um, they're going to be evaluated every single day. Because here's the thing, if you go through and you think you've arrived, that's when your improvement falls off. So we don't ever think we've arrived. There's always something to improve on. There's always something to get better at. Um, and that's at every single position that we're going to do that and we're going to focus on that. And every single day, you've got to go and fight for what you get. Um, and you have to earn everything that you get, and that's what our kids do. Our kids don't shy away from it. Uh, they're competitive. They're fighters. Um, they're men of character. And they want to be challenged on a daily basis by their peers, by their opponents, by their coaches. Uh, you know, they relish that challenge. And it would be a detriment if we didn't push them every single day to be the absolute best that they could be. You know, what we does it. He's less than a year removed from an ACL tear. Uh, for him to be, and um, on top of that, he's, he doesn't have a lot of experience. For him to be as good as he's been, has he exceeded your expectations? Do you guys expect him to recover as well as he has? Yeah, I've, I've been really pleased with, with this job that our training staff did with a lot of our guys. Um, and then the way he's worked, you know, you see it every single day. He pushes himself to be great. Um, him and Sean Bradley have a great relationship. Him and Isaiah Graham, Will Blue, Will Quinto, Sam Franklin, uh, do a really nice job competing every single day. If somebody messes up, they help each other, um, learn from it, 
you know, correct their issues. Um, but I've been I've been pleased with Chappelle, just how he's worked, how he's approached uh, the situation. He didn't start the first game, you know. He was a backup, and then he you know took it upon himself every single day to work on his game, improve his craft, um, and you know. But that's he still hasn't arrived. You know, he's got to get better every single day. Isaiah Graham Bowman, I think, is a great player. I mean, he's a great player in this program. So if he has a great day, then he's going to get possibly more reps. Um, so even though Chappelle's going to wear the number one, he deserves it. He earns it. He's got to earn every single thing he gets on a daily basis. And uh, I just appreciate that mindset and that, that thought process. Jeff, when you were talking about the run game yesterday and the issues in the run game, you brought up the miss IDs a lot. Yeah. Um, when you when you say miss IDs, do you mean it is a miss ID from the <coughs> yes, quarterback or the offensive line? Could be, it could be both. Yeah, it could be both. Um, so there's some yeah. things they were doing when they were rocking the front, they were bringing the safety down or a corner blitz or they would reload it. And then as the thing happens, they're trying to disguise it. And then once the play's about to go, you've got to get it reset to the new point. Um, I don't think we did that. You know, the entire game has been a big point of emphasis uh, all week, having the, the scout team do a great job of disguising, um, just so that it's not just when you get to practice, sometimes it's the easy look, and that's an easy point, that's an easy ID, and it's an easy matchup in the run game. Um, so we've tried to make it really difficult so that when we get to the game, you know, if a picture gets cloudy, they've seen that cloudy picture before, and they can recognize it and they can block it. And was it a little bit extra difficult considering you had two two quarterbacks in or three quarterbacks in? Was that a little bit more difficult? Yeah. At this point in the season, in theory, with 15, would you like some of the you know kind of step out from the quarterback group at this point? Almost halfway through. You would love to. I don't know who the best guy is to lead the offense and get in. Jeff, at the end of the game, obviously everybody's frustrated. But yeah, I think you mentioned a couple weeks ago that like if a guy picks up a personal foul penalty, it's going to be addressed. You have one late in the game. Yep. Obviously, the body language isn't going to be great. But how do you address that as a coach? For Absolutely, we game? we did that this morning. Um, so we had two, and they were again young guys that have not played a lot of football. Um, you know, and sometimes you get you know as a young kid, you get frustrated. You don't know how to control um, you know the things you say or your actions. And so we made sure it was very very. Um, evident how we carry ourselves in this program. Um, and one of the kids, uh, Sam Franklin, um, he came in uh, Sunday morning and he had written a letter, handwritten a letter to the referee. I've never seen that a day in my life. That he took it upon himself uh, to come in, he hand wrote a letter of apology, uh, apologizing for his actions. His shoe came untied, just, you know, just lay down, right? They'll stop the clock and we'll get a sub in. He didn't do it, he got frustrated. Um, and you know he got a personal foul flag, and on his own accord, obviously he got you know got reprimanded on the sideline. It was addressed, um, but Sam Sunday morning brought in a handwritten letter, um, and I sent it to uh, the head of officiating, and I sent it to the two officials that were involved, and they said they've never seen it in all their years of being a referee. Um, so I think those little moments, uh, as a coach, you're really proud of your guys because Coach Stacker didn't initiate it, I didn't initiate it. It just weighed on Sam's heart that he didn't. Uh, represent himself, he didn't represent his family, he didn't represent his team um, in the manner that you know he knows he should and for him to be reflective and, and make that kind of mature uh, you know gesture um, I thought it was pretty special from the kids so it, it's been addressed um, and then we use that as a teaching moment to the rest of the team this morning uh, before we even went out to practice I showed the response from the referees text and uh, just this is how we carry ourselves in our program we don't get personal fouls. We don't have unsportsmanlike conduct. We don't lose our composure, even if things are going really bad. Um, we stay in the moment. We stay in the game. We play the next play. And so those kind of things you kind of illustrate uh, to help everybody in the organization, you know, improve. Is that impression? Because he's been. Everybody talks about the quarterbacks, but he's been under the microscope a lot because of where he, the linebacker position sure. he's playing gets caught in coverage a lot. And he's coming. Out, he's got a couple of lot of films talking about what's expected of him. So. How much did that impress you, given the fact that there is a lot, there is a huge microscope on him? On There's no doubt, and I think you know the, I've been really proud of him. You know, when I first got here, uh, when I was here for bowl prep, um, Sam Franklin was a uh, scouting running back, and he was out there running the ball every single day. And I just kept noticing this kid. You know, he's popping off big runs um, and running violent and playing. You know, sometimes he would lose his composure when he was on the scout team when I was around. Um, but just to see how much he's matured. Uh, since the short time that we've been here, um, I couldn't be more proud uh, of Sam. You know, the action that happened and he got personal foul, obviously we've addressed. You know, we don't want that in the program. 
um, but his maturity to be able to step back and reflect and uh, make changes and not let that happen again, I've been really impressed with him. So there was a shot during the game on ESPN, and it was uh, <coughs> Dave was talking with Ben Tell, and it looked like they were having some disagreement. Uh, ben Tell shook his head, and even he talked about it today and said there, there was a miscommunication right. about a specific play. How does that, the communication with Dave and, and the rest it's of the team? It's good. You know, I'm in there, I hear him all the time. Dave's a passionate, competitive guy. Um, you guys have been around Ben Tell. Ben Tell's passionate, Ben Tell's competitive. And, uh, you know, so sometimes in the heat of the moment, things aren't going good. Um, you know, we all coach the guys hard, um, but every kid in our program knows how much we care about them. They know how much we love them. Um, so even though there might be, you know, we might push their buttons or challenge them or um, sometimes maybe even, you know, have loud correction, um, they know at the end of the day we love them, we have their back, we care about them. We want the absolute best for every single kid in our program. Um, so I think those kind of things happen on a competitive situation, um, competitive environment, things are going bad, we just gotta work together, come together. Um, and play great football as a team. Jeff, when you're evaluating the quarterback spot, how, how do you kind of balance Logan starting the first three games or starting the first four games and Frank's small body working games? And how, how do you balance that with, with practice this week? Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the thing we've got to do. You know, that's what we've been doing. Um, you know, we try to make sure the reps between our, every kid on our position, or excuse me, every kid on the team is about 55 to 45, sometimes 60 to 40, but it never goes beyond 60 to 40 for any position on our team. Um, so I think that's a healthy evaluation, a health, healthy sample size. Um, and then when it, Rich sent me the stats of, you know, um, PJ playing, you know, you know, having 1,500 throws and 47 starts, um, and he took for four years the reps as a starter, so that all that's multiplied. Um, you know, I'm big on the map and glad, well, 10,000 hour rule, you know, takes that to be an expert. And I'm sure, you know, Mark is, you know, his first four articles that he's ever written, you know, I'm sure there's a point he's like, oh, I'm so much better now because I've read some of his stuff and it's great. I'm not going to um, that. <laughs> but, you know, the stuff he writes now is awesome, right? It's well thought out. It's articulate, you know. Um, I'm sure if he went back to like, the first four, you know. He's an articulate <laughs> guy. Enough of that. the season, um, you know, that I think that, you know, obviously they're embarrassed. Um, you know, you have negative four yards rushing, no offensive line ever wants to have that happen to them. Um, regardless of who's playing, whatever the rotation is, um, they want to run the ball. You know, give, not giving up sacks is great, but as an offensive line, as a competitor, you want to run the ball, you want to push people around, um, you know, and that's the, that's the identity that they want to have, and that's from them. Obviously, we want it, and that's a point of emphasis for us. Um, to be team run every single Tuesday, to be team run every single Wednesday, um, to stop the run and to run the football. Um, so I know that's a big challenge going forward uh, for those guys, just to get people moved off the ball um, and let our you know let our running backs do some work. Yes, I said, Coach, you referenced Ed Oliver before. He was a big time recruit, probably the biggest yeah. that Tom ever had down there. Right. He's been as good as advertised. I think coaches probably get this question sometimes. Does it remind you of anybody? You saw some of the best defensive linemen in the country at Mississippi State and yeah. Florida. I mean, how, how good is he? If you could put that in context, how good is he and how much of a challenge is he going to be on Saturday? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's a really good player. And the big thing, you know, in the SEC, um, having been in that league for the last six years, the differentiating factor in the SEC are defensive backs. Not defensive ends, it's not even really offensive line, it's defensive tackles in that league that can control the game. If you can control the game from the defensive tackle position, it messes up everything. And so I've been blessed to be around some really good ones. You know, obviously Fletcher Cox right here in town. I was with him for three years. Um, Jonathan Bullard, Caleb Brantley the last two years in Florida. Um, so I've been blessed. Chris Jones who's now starting uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs. So I've been blessed to be around some really good ones. And when you can dominate a game from that position, it makes everything else harder for an offense. And when you turn on the tape, I mean, he just jumps off the tape, the penetration, the strength, the power. Um, so I've been really present. And I knew about him, you know, even before I got into this league. You know, he's got a reputation that transcends to, you know, across college football. Um, so we're very aware of what a good player he is. And, uh, you know, we have to have our eyes on him and know what he is on every single snap.